Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, I was just about to keg up a couple beers and then I was gonna do a video on force carving in a keg and then I realized that I should probably do some of this stuff in order. So like one of the things that is probably important if for me is if you wanna do it and you wanna force carb um, a keg, you're probably gonna serve it off of a kegerator or a keezer, um, depending on what you have. Um, and I've seen on a couple of Facebook forums that I follow people asking about, you know, what's the best way to do it? What are different ways to do it? Um, you know, what does everybody have? Let's see your keys or all these kind of things so people can show off some of their handiwork and all that kind of fun stuff. And I realized that I should probably do something that's the same. Um, quite frankly, it's pretty simple to do. Um, I guess it's really kind of a monetary thing. Just make sure you have enough money <laughs> um, to do it because it can get kind of expensive, especially when you start getting into you know, into the taps themselves, uh, the faucets and the shanks and um, all the different CO2 components and that kind of thing. But um, I, to me personally, it's one of those things where I despise bottling probably more than anything of the entire homebrew process. So this is kind of a nice way to, to serve your beer. Plus if you have friends over, it's kind of a fun way to do it. Um, you can kind of show them and it looks cool. I think one of the other things that's nice is Every now and then when you only want to have six ounces of beer or eight ounces of beer and you don't want to open a full bottle, yes, those times happen. Um, it's very easy to come and just pour, you know, six ounces or eight ounces or 24 or whatever you really want to do. Um, plus it's easier too if you have a party and you want to have, you know, things like pitchers of beers for your friends. Um, that's also pretty easy. So this is kind of my, my way of doing it and I, I'll uh, try to take you through a little step by step. Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, I was just about to keg up a couple beers and then I was gonna do a video on force carving in a keg. And then I realized that I should probably do some of this stuff in order. So like one of the things that is probably important if for me is if you wanna do it and you wanna force carb um, a keg, you're probably gonna serve it off of a kegerator or a keezer, um, depending on what you have. Um, and I've seen on a couple of Facebook forums that I follow people asking about, you know, what's the best way to do it? What are different ways to do it? Um, you know, what does everybody have? Let's see your keys or all these kind of things so people can show off some of their handiwork and all that kind of fun stuff. And I realized that I should probably do something that's the same. Um, quite frankly, it's pretty simple to do. Um, I guess it's really kind of a monetary thing. Just make sure you have enough money <laughs> um, to do it because it can get kind of expensive, especially when you start getting into, you know, into the taps themselves, uh, the faucets and the shanks and um, all the different CO2 components and that kind of thing. But, um, I, to me personally, it's one of those things where I despise bottling probably more than anything of the entire homebrew process. So this is kind of a nice way to, to serve your beer. Plus if you have friends over, it's kind of a fun way to do it. Um, you can kind of show them and it looks cool. I think one of the other things that's nice is every now and then when you only want to have six ounces of beer or eight ounces of beer and you don't want to open a full bottle, yes, those times happen. Um, it's very easy to come and just pour you know, six ounces or eight ounces or 24 or whatever you really want to do. Um, plus it's easier too if you have a party and you want to have, you know, things like pitchers of beers for your friends. Um, that's also pretty easy. So this is kind of my, my way of doing it. And I, I'll uh, try to take you through a little step by step. So here is my keyser. This is a 15 cubic foot freezer um, that I have converted. As you can see, there is a two by six collar. Um, I guess one of the things that you will need or probably should need is a miter saw um, of some sort, a cordless drill um, with a couple different bits, um, but overall it's actually pretty simple to do. So what you have to do first is when you get your freezer is take off these hinges. Um, if In order to get this two by six co collar in there, you'll have to take that off. You take the door completely off. Um, measure, you know, from here to there of how long that's going to take. Um, it should be pretty simple. Cut your two by sixes. I have mine. I didn't miter them and make them look all pretty because quite frankly, there's really no need. Um, I do have down here, there is a bead of silicone that's on there. So when I put this together, I took the whole frame, I cut it out. You can't really see the screws because they're underneath this label um, that's on here, but it is screwed together with just a couple drywall screws. It's really nothing all that fancy. Um, after you create your collar, lay down a bead of caulk along your, um, along the top. So kind of along here, um, you'll kind of see too. I have some caulk on the inside to help try to seal this. Um, take that. Put that down and then you'll get your door 
and you put the door back on and then it's kind of hard to see, but I had to drill into the collar right there. So here is the original hole down there. Sorry, we'll get that to focus uh, right there. Here is a new one. Um, you probably won't be able to use some of the original screws. I had to use something a little bit different, but honestly, that I don't think that that really matters. Um, so I got one there, one there. Now, uh, another thing to note, I think that's important, is likely if I'm gonna have the door open to do this, the compressor is going to kick in. Hopefully it's not too loud. I apologize in advance. So inside, I have all my kegs, miscellaneous bottles, all that kind of stuff. Um, CO2 tank, something you're definitely going to need. I have a manifold here. I have four lines, one, two, three, four, because I have four taps. Um, I have them labeled as such, one, two, three, four, because they correspond left to right. Once again, one, two, three, four. Um, very simple. Um, one thing to note, so you really only need probably um, one regulator here. I have two. As you'll note, I have this sitting at about 12, this sitting about 18. The reason why I do that is I have a high side that's on there for carbonating, which I'm going to be doing pretty soon when you need a carbon keg. You typically do it at a higher pressure than you're gonna serve. My serving pressure is about 13 pounds. So you can see these lines are about five feet long that go from CO2, you know, from the manifold into the keg, and then they go from keg over to the shank and the faucet. Um, pretty simple, really. Um, when you have your faucets, you just kind of come and determine where you want them to be. You drill a hole. I use one of these guys. It's a, it's a boring bit. It's three quarter inch in diameter. Um, you can also use a spade bit. A spade bit is kind of like a, it's got a rectangle with a point on it. Um, I, I have a couple of these. I've used them for other projects and I find them easier to use or just better to use overall. I think they go through cleaner. Now, when I first got this kegerator, I only had one tap and I thought it was really clever to put a hole right there. In hindsight, that was really stupid. As you can kind of see from the side, there's this handle that sticks over the edge. Now on a smaller one, you may not have that, but the handle, this handle right here, excuse me, gets in the way of these tall tap handles. You may have little short ones like that where it won't be the problem. But I think the other thing that is not fun is the fact that I use this as a table. So I'll put um, carboys up there and I will siphon down into a keg down on the floor. And when you do that, this gets in the way of a tap handle and it's really kind of stupid to put it there. Um, don't make that same mistake. Cover it with a sticker. You know, Home Brewers Association, that's a good one. Um, those guys are okay. These guys, doesn't really matter. Um, either way, don't put it there. Put it off to the side. It's just in a better place. Um, one thing that you're gonna wanna do too is with this freezer is it's made to freeze. I have one of these guys, which is made by, I believe it's Johnson Controls. Um, it's a temperature regulator. There is a thermocouple that comes out here. You plug in this. There's a plug all the way in the back that you plug your freezer into. Um, what it does is it interrupts the temperature at 38 to 40 degrees. I just have it set there. Um, the programming controls on this are pretty simple. Um, there's another one made by Inkbird. I'll get a picture of that too. Um, I have that on my fermentation chamber. I think that's really good too. It's cheaper than that, than the Johnson Controls one, but I bought that one first. Um, so another thing to notice, so I've, why I have two or how they're connected. So you can buy this regulator, buy re this regulator, and then you just need to buy this little pipe nipple. Um, you can buy this whole setup already made probably from your local homebrew shop or Amazon or something like that. Um, I didn't have that when I first got this, so I just got this little pipe nipple. There's Teflon tape right there. You just screw the two things together. So they're in series. The high pressure is first, low pressure second. 
So even though this thing is set at 18 or even higher, um, this still sits at serving pressure. This line comes off here and goes up into my manifold. I do have on both of these inline valves. Um, I do that so I can shut these off at any point. Also, once again, Teflon tape. Um, pretty simple to do. Um, same thing here, you can buy this manifold. I got it from my local homebrew shop. Um, got these valves, these hoses, you can either make them um, or you can just get them from the shop. Um, it might be a little bit more money to get them from the shop um, versus making them, but if you don't have um, the tools, that's okay too. Just buy them as is. Um, it's pretty simple to do. Um, so each one of these goes to, goes to all your different kegs. The beer lines, same thing. They go all to the different faucets. As you can see, some of these are a little bit different um, just because I have different shank lengths and I don't know, it's just because that's how it was when I bought the stuff. Um, when you get these, so you have gray, black. I kind of look at this as going gray is gas, um, beer is black. I don't know if whoever created this idea um, or created these at first, like thought of that, but that's how I mentally think about it. Also, um, I kind of, these little, these little tags, I just started using these. All they are is luggage tags and these are business cards and you can swap these out. It's real easy. It's a nice way to remember which is which because eventually you're going to have a bunch of kegs in here um, and you're not going to remember which one's which. Uh, well, potentially you won't remember which one's which. I have one of these guys too, which is, let me grab it. Let me grab it. Damp rid. Um, no matter what, you're gonna have liquid in here. This is a thing that will help absorb some of that. Otherwise, as you can kind of see down there, there's ice because there's moisture. Um, this isn't perfect, but it helps and it's pretty cheap. I think that's just about it really. Once you get everything um, hooked up, um, you may not be as fortunate as I am, and I have a friend, let's see if this will work, who makes these tap handles for me. Um, some of these are old, let's see, what's this one? Plumbing parts, I think this was a candlestick. Um, these are just other little brass parts. This was a torque wrench. Um, on the handle, you just need, I believe it's a 3 8 16 female end that goes in here. Um, these parts are pretty simple to buy from Lowe's, Home Depot, um, anything like that, you know, any of those stores, hardware store, um, and all it does is thread. And from there, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys can figure out how to hook up a, hook up a faucet. It's really not that hard. Um, I do have a nice little drip tray down there because even though you're gonna run beer out of here. It is going to leak. Um, these these uh, valves that are in here are not perfect as soon as you shut it down because there's still gonna be a little liquid. Um, it's nice to take care of it. Sometimes I just keep a little towel on there because um, that's easy to wash. And I think that's about it. Um, I do have a little whiteboard up here. So if people come over, they, can, uh, they know what's in my beer. Once again, one, two, three, four. Um, do this however you want. You don't have to use a whiteboard. You could use a piece of paper. Um, I just like the whiteboard because I use it all the time. Beers are circling through here all the time. And um, it's just kind of a nice little touch uh, without building a fancy little box, you know, over the top. Um, but I guess I think that's probably about it. It's a pretty, pretty simple, pretty simple project. Um, if you have a little bit of, you know, basic knowledge of tools and It'll save you all that headache from bottles, which you don't want to do. It really is a pain. Um, this is just a much better way of serving it. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure to leave that in the comments. Um, if you thought that this video was helpful, click down below, you know, click like, um, follow this page. Um, if you have any questions, comments, like I said, put it down there. Um, I'll try to get back to you. And um, if I missed anything, please let me know. I'm sure that I did because I did this without a script. And uh, like I said, just keep following these videos and hopefully it's helpful. I'll see you next time.